Do the dead really speak to us, or is it all just in our minds? Imagine if you could have a conversation with someone who's no longer among the living. What would you say? What would they tell you? Communication with the dead has fascinated and terrified people for centuries. In every corner of the world, across all cultures and societies, there are those who believe that the veil between the living and the dead is not as impenetrable as we might think. From whispered prayers to elaborate rituals, the desire to reach out to those who have passed on is a powerful force that spans generations. Tonight, we delve into the mysterious and eerie phenomenon of talking to the dead, a subject that has left an indelible mark on human history and continues to captivate the curious and the brave. Throughout history, the idea of an afterlife has shaped the way societies view death. Ancient Egyptians believed in a complex journey to the afterlife, where the deceased would communicate through dreams and omens. In ancient Greece, the oracles at Delphi were said to communicate with spirits to guide the living. Native American cultures often view the dead as still very much part of the community, interacting with the living through nature. In Victorian England, the spiritualist movement emerged, where seances and mediums became the bridge to the other side, promising to connect grieving families with their lost loved ones. But beyond the rituals and traditions lies a universal question. What happens when we try to speak to the dead? In the quiet town of Maple Ridge, North Carolina, in 1994, a local woman named Carol claimed she had made contact with her deceased sister. Carol was not a believer in the supernatural. In fact, she had always been a skeptic. But after losing her sister in a tragic car accident, she began to experience strange occurrences in her home. Lights flickering, objects moving, and most notably, a cold presence that would fill her room at night. Desperate for answers, Carol attended a seance organized by a friend who was an amateur medium. The medium, a woman named Linda, had a reputation for accuracy in the small community, but Carol remained doubtful. During the seance, Carol asked if her sister was present. Almost immediately, Linda's demeanor changed. In a voice not her own, she began to recount details of Carol's childhood that only her sister could have known. The air grew thick, and the temperature in the room dropped as Carol felt a cold hand brush her shoulder. At that moment, Carol was convinced that her sister was reaching out to her from beyond the grave. Another chilling encounter occurred in 2007 in a remote cabin in the woods of Oregon. A group of friends, intrigued by ghost stories they had heard about the area, decided to conduct an EVP, electronic voice phenomenon session. They had no expectations but were looking for a thrill. As they asked questions into the darkness, the only sounds were the crackling of the fire and the distant rustle of trees. When they played back the recording, their blood ran cold. A voice, faint but unmistakable, answered their questions, mentioning names and events none of the friends knew about. The voice spoke of a tragic fire that had claimed lives in that very cabin in the early 1900s, a piece of history none of them were aware of until they later confirmed it in local archives. In both stories, the contact was brief, but the impact was profound. Whether these encounters were genuine or not, they left an indelible mark on those who experienced them blurring the line between the living and the dead. Communicating with the dead is not without its challenges. Skeptics argue that such experiences are merely psychological phenomena, manifestations of grief, stress, or even the power of suggestion. Carol's friends and family were divided, with some convinced that she had imagined the whole ordeal. The group in Oregon faced similar skepticism, with critics claiming that the voice on their recording was a trick of sound or a fabrication. Emotionally, these encounters can be draining. Carol was haunted by the thought that her sister was trapped, unable to move on. The friends in Oregon found themselves second-guessing every creak and whisper in the night, unable to shake the feeling that they had disturbed something that should have been left alone. The ethical implications also loom large. If these spirits are real, what does it mean to summon them? Are we offering comfort? Or are we selfishly refusing to let go? For Carol, the resolution came in the form of acceptance. Whether or not her sister truly reached out to her, the experience allowed her to process her grief and find peace in the belief that her sister was watching over her. She no longer feared the cold presence in her home, but welcomed it as a sign that her sister was near. The friends in Oregon decided not to pursue further contact with the spirit they encountered. Although the experience had been unsettling, it also gave them a new perspective on life and death. They left the cabin with a sense of respect for the unknown, understanding that some things are better left undisturbed. These encounters, whether real or imagined, offer a glimpse into the mysteries of the afterlife. 
They remind us that life and death are intertwined in ways we may never fully understand. The stories we've explored tonight highlight the profound impact that communication with the dead can have on the living. Whether viewed as a psychological coping mechanism or a genuine connection to the afterlife, these experiences challenge our understanding of what it means to be alive and what awaits us after death. The line between the living and the dead is thin, and for those who have dared to cross it, the answers they find are as varied as the questions they ask. If tonight's stories have intrigued you, I encourage you to delve deeper into the history and practices of communicating with the dead. Share your own experiences in the comments, and if you're brave enough, try an EVP session or attend a seance. But remember, not everything on the other side wants to be found. For more chilling tales, check out my other videos on The Unexplained. And don't forget to subscribe for more journeys into the unknown.